Dorothy Stratton was once in a lifetime. She was, in every respect, fodder for the dreams of millions of men. She's gorgeous, and this town will destroy her. A Hollywood dream gone horribly wrong. A worker at Dairy Queen who became a Playboy playmate. She's blonde, she's well-built, she has an innocence about her. Her life memorialized in the film Star 80. She became sought after by every man in the world, even if it was only in their minds. And the small-time promoter who couldn't let her go. I knew that he was dangerous, and somehow or other, she didn't see that. The rising Hollywood star murdered when she was 20 years old. Back in 1979, Dorothy Stratton was the angelic girl next door. I'm getting over my shyness as, as uh, fast, <laughs> but I, I am very sensitive and I'm very romantic. That's the type of girl a lot of men fantasize about. A lot of men like the girl next door. I mean, are you the girl next door? Because it seems to me that I've never lived next door to anyone who looked like you. <laughs> well, when I came from the town that I came from, um, I lived with my family still. I just graduated from high school. I worked in a Dairy Queen for four years wearing pigtails and no makeup. Dorothy Stratton was an angel. She just was a sweet, effervescent angel. She was a young girl from Vancouver, British Columbia. She was very naive. A high school student really had no worldly experience. She is the daughter of a woman who came over after World War II. She has almost never known her biological father. Dorothy had started working at this Dairy Queen when she was 14, and she was really pleased to have found a job that young. She was 18 when Paul Snyder, a former pimp, walks into the Dairy Queen. Paul Snyder is an interesting character, a scary one, but uh, undeniably interesting. He didn't keep a low profile. In fact, he drove a black Corvette or a mink coat, star of David, encrusted with jewels that he hung on his chest. He made a pretty good living as a promoter for automobile shows and cycling shows, but it wasn't enough to accommodate his extravagant taste. So he began to procure girls, pimp them on the side. So he sees a sexy girl in a Dairy Queen. She's a child, basically. But, you know, hmm, hmm, what can happen for me through her is of interest to me. He bought her beautiful jewelry, beautiful clothes, so she was totally taken in by him. Paul Snyder warped her insecurity and, and gave her compliments in the places where she felt most vulnerable. And when you're insecure and you hear those words, they fill holes that you feel you're made up of. He's telling her, my goodness, you could be a Playboy bunny, you could be this, you could be that, and in her world, working at Dairy Queen and not seeing the future for herself, that could be something. She was very shy at the time, too. So this is a whole new world for her. And it took him a little while to talk me into agreeing to taking some test pictures. I was had never taken my clothes off or anyone I didn't know. And eventually she said yes, and it was just this gradual experience of saying yes a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until you suddenly find yourself as a part of this completely different world. And it's hard to look back and sort of measure how far you have come. The photos are submitted to Playboy, changing her life. To commemorate their 25th anniversary, Playboy had a big playmate hunt. So they had a big outreach, and there were going to be lots of prizes and things like that. And so Dorothy was one of the runners up. She didn't win, but Playboy knew they had a star on their hands. She wound up working as a Playboy bunny at the Los Angeles Playboy Club. A lot of women come to Playboy, and they want to be published in the magazine. And they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, but they are not Hugh Hefner's idea of the girl next door. They are too worldly or womanly. <laughs> a lot of men like to have their women um, as as not, you know, had have not having not been around too much. Within a year, she'd gotten a centerfold, Miss August 1979. I noticed in the first centerfold that we ran that if you look at it, 
that she's looking up. So you kind of saw the whites of her eyes. And I'm not gonna say it exaggerated in this sense because I don't even think she recognized what power she had at all. That picture told me a lot. The photos are incredible and, and Hef's thrilled and, and next thing you know, you know, you get your month. She was really happy then. Paul had been with her every step of the way. He saw Dorothy as his golden ticket. The whole idea of the Playboy Mansion was to be cool. Look, there are hot and cold running women here. Just be cool. Paul Center didn't know how to do that. And he knew that Dorothy was his meal ticket. Who was going to give him access to anything? He looked like a putz. I mean, he had the fur coats all the way to the floor, the chains, the silk black shirts. I mean, he just was such a cartoon character. Paul was offensive. Paul was also, he looked small time, he dressed small time, he sounded small time, he acted small time, and Hef didn't. Hefner took one look at Snyder, and one word came into his mind, pimp. That was the dirtiest word you could say at the Playboy Mansion. So Snyder, ever the promoter, comes up with a new idea, male strippers dancing at a club called Chippendales. He had a gift. He had a lot of gifts. Paul was not a soft banana. But also you have to understand that just having the idea is different than bringing the idea off. It went nowhere under his guidance, but then of course became a huge, huge business for Chippendales. The partners that he was involved with took the idea, liked the idea, and then kicked him out of it. So he said that he uh, got ripped off on that. At the same time, he was losing control over Dorothy. When Hef introduced her to a real money manager and took the ability of him to have the checkbook away, it really affected him. He was not a happy camper. I think Hugh Hefner saw her as being someone who could be in the movies and posters and shows and, and someone who could represent as an ambassador the Playboy brand in a way that he'd been struggling to find. Hefner was never the Hollywood insider that he wanted to be. You know, the, the big producers would come to his parties and would party, but they never gave him respect. So in order to get respect, he needed to field a star, a breakthrough star. That would give him legitimacy, and he had high hopes that Dorothy could do that. And then in 79, Playboy did an hour-long special for the ABC television network featuring the village people and Richard Dawson, who was then the host of Family Feud. That show gave her an entree into Hollywood. Her move into movies is very rapid. It's small in the beginning, tiny parts, but considering from the moment in 1978 where the photographs were taken, you know, by 1979, early 1980, she's starring in Hollywood pictures. I've done it for you. I love you, Sergeant Thorpe. She plays Galaxina, who is this perfect female robot. Sexy, but you can't actually have sex with her. Perfect only as a tool to the men around her. Galaxina. Her rise to stardom also seemed to be on a perfect track. She couldn't believe that all this was happening to her. And every minute there was something new and exciting and people were fawning all over her. And, and Paul Snyder would say, we're on a rocket ship to the moon. <laughs> it was like, we, we, we. But she couldn't turn her back on the man who plucked her from obscurity one year earlier. She was the meal ticket and he loved her fame, but he was jealous because he was afraid that he could lose her, which he did. Despite objections from the Playboy empire, Dorothy marries him. Everybody was upset. There wasn't one person who was happy for her. Dorothy saw the good in everybody, but Paul scared me because he had that need to control. As a woman, I knew that he was dangerous, and somehow or other, she didn't see that. She never felt that there was any danger in, in anything with Paul Snyder. But when she falls in love with another man, Dorothy had no idea how dangerous her husband would become. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.